so <laughs> I posted another thing about the related to flat earth and it wasn't this one wasn't even just making fun of it, it was pointing out that when people argue about the uh, like whether you can see the curvature of the earth from the ocean shore or from a plane or from what whatever um, both sides that argue that are misunderstanding the geometry and are arguing something completely pointless. Um, because from every vantage point, a sphere will appear like a circle. Doesn't matter how close it is, doesn't matter how big it is, it will always appear as a circle. Now, when you get really damn close, you can't see the circle in your field of view all at once. You have to turn all the way around, and then it starts to look like, you know, as you approach an altitude of zero, it starts to look like just a line around you. Um, but it's still just a really damn big circle. And the thing is, a circle will also look like a circle. So the, the outline of the planet, if it's a circle or if it's a sphere, will always be a circle. So arguing about whether you see the curvature is pointless in both directions. Like, if you went up high enough and it was a circle, you would also see the curvature because it would be a circle. And if it was a sphere, you would see the curvature because it would be a circle. Um, and the, the, the geometric explanation, um, for those who care... If you pick a sphere and then a point in space from which you're looking at it and picture a cone that goes out from the, the, where you're looking from and touches the very edges, that defines a circular plane. And that's what the outline always will be, no matter what. Um, and at any, distance, at any distance, more than a few hundred feet, we have no depth perception from our stereoscopic vision, our eyes are too close together. Um, so you can't see. Now, things like a shadow on the sun, I mean, say a shadow on the earth and things like that can obviously indicate it's a sphere. Like, you watch the, the light part and the shadow part of the moon, and it's obviously a sphere, not a disk. If it was a disk, it would be either all the way light or all the way dark, or have really, really long shadows for about two seconds as the sun moves from in front of its plane to behind its plane. Um, so, but I didn't even, uh, the point of this rant wasn't even going to be the flat earth thing in particular, but the, the study of how people's brains work, um, because there's so many people who, and just about all the, the flat earthers do this, they have a few bits of knowledge. They're not clear about how they go together. They have big gaps in their thinking. They don't really understand physics and geometry, but they have enough pieces that they sort of patch it together into this wild-ass theory. Or they listen to somebody else patch it together into a wild-ass theory. And then they think, oh, now I know something that most people don't know. Now I'm in the know. Um, because they don't actually know what it means to know something. They don't actually understand what proof means in the scientific sense. Like a, a mathematical proof. Um, and so they, they just sort of, when they're pretty sure they call that a fact and say it's been proven when they have no idea what those words even mean. And neither of them applies. Um, a, an example of a mathematical proof is you can, uh, I did this one, my first day in prison in my head while sitting in solitary. Um, you can prove the Pythagorean theorem, which is that a right triangle the square of the hypotenuse, the long diagonal side, the square of that is equal to the sum of the square of the other two sides. That can be mathematically proven if you know how. It can be geometrically proven. It can also be proven just with the numbers on the page. Um, I did it geometrically. And that's not, it's not a matter of, I kind of think that might be the case, and here's one illustration where that works. Therefore, it's proof. That's not how proofs work. Um, and, oh, I mentioned in the post that I have a, uh, oh, I may have been in a different post, that I made a bunch of puzzles while I was in prison. I made, like, a puzzle book. Somewhere I have them, I don't know where, in one of the boxes of mayhem around here. Um, and I hope to, to post some of them. Some of them are pretty dang simple, and some of them were, one of them was, uh, took me, like, a day and something just to make sure that there was only one possible solution. To prove it. And by prove it, I don't mean randomly try things and see if they work. I mean logically prove that it cannot be done any other way. 
Um, and and but and logic puzzles are that way. They're they're about proof. Um, where okay, you rule out this, and then you rule out that, and and like with certainty, not just well, that seems unlikely. That's not what proofs are about. But the the whole flat Earth thing is a great example of how how so many people have this sort of vague connection between they hear people's opinions and they think they know some facts and they and they reach a conclusion or believe somebody else's conclusion and call it a proof. And it's fascinating, like every once in a while I post something about it and then I I bother to do the back and forth with a bunch of these people who don't really understand physics or geometry or anything. Um, it's fascinating to watch what their brains do with that. Um, because, I mean, and I'll, I won't get into all the details of all the different things, but one thing is, that, well, if you believe in a heliocentric blah, 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 which means the sun at the middle of things, like, they, that has nothing to do with what I just explained about the shape of the planet we're on. That is independent of where we are, who's orbiting around what, anything else in the universe, that's independent from what's the shape of this thing we're on. So they're already confused just with one simple statement. Oh, and I, I, I pointed out the, the two-stick experiment. Two people a couple thousand miles apart each suspend a yardstick, so it's hanging straight down for each of them, and then they measure, on a flat surface, they measure the length of the shadow, and they'll get two different lengths, and they call, and they do it at the same time. So, okay, you're way over there. Your shadow, the sun is almost overhead, so the shadow of your yardstick is only a foot long. Where I am, the shadow of the yardstick is six feet long. And if you just draw a simple triangle if you, and do the geometry and the math, you can determine one of two things. If the Earth is flat, you can determine, you can triangulate and determine how high up the sun is going, like, across the planet. Um, and, or, if the world is spherical and the sun is really damn far away, you can figure out the approximate diameter of the planet and i've done that and it's it's if you know the math it's pretty dang easy um, if you know someone at the equator who and you call them when it's directly overhead so there's no shadow it makes the math really damn easy because um, theirs is zero um but so there's this experiment and i explain how to do it and of course none of the flat earthers ever have a response or ever bother to do it instead they they respond with things that demonstrate um, demonstrate this sort of vague grasp on reality like they don't bother understanding what it is they're saying or understanding what it is anybody else is saying. Because like one guy said, well, as the sun moves across the sky, that proves that you're sick. Thing. Look, this is done at one point in time. The movement of absolutely everything is irrelevant to this proof. The sun could just sit there, it can go a zillion miles an hour, it can be spinning in one direction, in no directions, whatever. It's one point in time, this proves that the Earth... Oh, the last part is, when you prove either the altitude of the sun if the world is flat, or the size of the, the sphere if the sun is really damn far away, you can rule out the one of the sun being flat because you can determine the distance of the sun from the two different observers and its apparent size will be the same. So, for example, if I have a really long shadow and somebody else has no shadow and we figure out, well, it's, over, it's a few hundred miles over your head and it's several thousand miles away from me, therefore, it should appear ten times as big to you as it does to me. And it doesn't. Therefore, the world is not freaking flat. Down is different for me, than it is for you. Our downs are not parallel. They are going towards the center of the earth, and we're standing on different parts of it, so down is different. Um, so, so that rules that out, and it's pretty easy to do, uh, and that's all it takes, is two cell phones, two sticks, and some basic math. Um, you can do the, the trigonometry and sines and cosines if you know that stuff, or you can just do the, the Pythagorean thing. 
um, of just figuring out the triangles. You know, this leg and this leg, and you figure out the other leg. Um, but when people respond, well, how do you explain this? Well, what about this? It's clear that they're not even trying to understand their own position and not even trying to understand the other person's position. Now, ultimately, do I care how many people think the Earth is flat or round? Not really. Like, if they understand that nobody has the right to rule them, they can be ignorant and misguided and other th stuff, and I don't particularly care. Um, so I do bring it up to study how the human mind works or how it works badly, um, and to... And because I think it's actually being pushed by um, people who want nonconformists to look like idiots. Oh, you question government and you think the earth is flat. Uh, you know, guilt by association. Uh, which is also bad logic, but people will fall for that. Um, and there are well-meaning meaning people who are just kind of ignorant of physics and, and, and math and geometry. Which is a lot of people. And that's fine. Doesn't mean you're an evil person because you don't happen to know this stuff. Um, but I also don't want them being sort of dragged into the, you know, so they jump on the bandwagon of this goofy, stupid, provably false theory. Um, and that's the other reason I bother to argue with them. But you know, like, there's one, there's one woman who says, oh, I'm a simple woman and blah, blah, blah. And I believe what I see and whatever else. And she just proclaims, uh, maybe flaz, maybe spherical. Nobody can prove it either way. And I had to point out, the first time I pointed out sort of nicely, um, just because you can't prove it doesn't mean nobody can prove it. And by the way, it's pretty freaking arrogant of you to say that. Because you don't understand how to prove something, you decide that the other 7 or 8 billion people also don't understand it. Well, guess what? A lot of them do. And you're, you're displaying your ignorance, which is fine. You know, you're allowed to be ignorant of stuff. Everybody's ignorant of a whole lot of things. Um, but to throw arrogance on top of that and just proclaim that other people, oh, you don't understand it either. Like uh, all the boneheads who, oh, so you think government always lies except NASA? You think they tell the truth? Like, but what a dead giveaway because that indicates that the only reason they thought the earth was spherical is because NASA said so. And now the only reason they think it's flat is because somebody else said so and gave a different bullshit explanation that they didn't really understand. Um, but so, and they project that mental dependency onto other people and they assume that the only reason I think it's round is because I read it in a textbook or because NASA said so or something. And they, they assume that I'm as ignorant and intellectually lazy as they are <laughs> and didn't bother to figure it out. And that's actually, it's a, it's a thing I've used at different talks and stuff, um, to, to illustrate something, because it's a good point, when you, you ask the average person, like, is the earth flat or, or spherical? And the vast majority of people, thankfully, know it's spherical. But if you ask them, how do you know that and can you prove it? Most of them don't, don't know how to prove it. And they have to think about it. Some of them can figure it out after a while if they know a little bit about geometry and stuff. But it isn't just immediately apparent. It's like, well, I've seen pictures of it. Well, what if they were fake? Uh, like, can you prove it independently all by yourself with stuff that you can actually have? Or are you just taking somebody else's word for it? And most people, either way, are taking somebody else's word for it. Um, but, yeah, so ultimately, I don't particularly care about this topic, except it's a great way to study how the human mind works and how it fudges things and how it gets attached to to conclusions and why and how it gets defensive when you attack those conclusions with logic and evidence and the person who already like invested in this conclusion doesn't want to let go and, and the funny thing is they then project that onto other people and say oh you just still think it's wrong because you're not willing to question it yeah I am and I did and five minutes later the question was answered <laughs> and then I was done uh, well, well, and, and some of their arguments are just stupid. And, and this is when I can't always tell between somebody just being totally ignorant or um, being either a troll, they're just doing it for fun, or, um, or it's actually, you know, people getting paid to try to make the freedom movement look stupid. 
But some of the arguments are just idiotic. Like somebody was saying, the Nile River, enough said. I was like, well, apparently that's not enough said because why do you think the Nile River is a proof of something? Well, because it's really, really long, and so it would have to go over this big arch. Like, it's going over part of the sphere. And I was like, do you, do you not even bother to understand that much about what you're arguing against? Oh, and somebody else said, this big area, this huge wide area, there's like almost no variation in the elevation in this whole area. See? And I had to explain, yeah, elevation doesn't mean flat. It means distance from the center of the earth. If you had a perfect sphere, the elevation of every point on the surface would be the same as every other point. Elevation doesn't mean upness in a parallel flat universe. <laughs> and uh, and some goof, doofus saying, so gravity is strong enough to pull this whole ocean down, but it's not strong enough to sink this guy in a kayak. It's like, oh, are you really that dumb? <laughs> like... Uh, is it worth trying to explain displacement and stuff to you? Um, but it's it, it's fascinating that people... I, and this is... It's so weird. And I don't know if it's tied in with the whole thing of everyone should think their opinions are equally valid. And no, they freaking shouldn't. But it seems like a lot of people don't... Like, they all the way don't grasp that there are things that they don't know. And like, I know there's a hell of a lot of things I don't know. And if somebody said a bunch of words and I don't know the terminology and I don't know the field of thought and I'm not at all familiar with it, I'm not just going to proclaim, you didn't say anything. I would proclaim, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not versed in that and I just, you know, you may very well know something and understand something that I don't. And that's okay. But to these people that, that just declare, you've been duped into thinking the earth is spherical. Blah, blah, they assume that nobody else actually understands it. And, and then they make really stupid arguments demonstrating that they don't understand it. Now, there is... Uh, oh, and, and the... You know, the thing of them bringing up heliocentric versus geocentric. In other words, like, do we go around the sun or does the sun go around us? Um, helio being sun, heliocentric mean the sun is in the middle, just of our solar system. Um, that can't be really easily proven immediately in, as far as I know. Let me throw that in. Maybe somebody else knows how to do it. Um, but as far as, you know, at one point in time... I'm pretty sure you can't possibly prove movement of anything at one point in time because you need different points in time for it to, for there to be movement. Um, but as far as I know, the easiest way to prove what's going around what is to watch the orbit of the planets and then chart them and show that it doesn't make sense if they're all going around us. Some of them are doing figure eights and crap. Um, but... If they're all going around the sun, from our vantage point, the patterns make sense. Um, so, but that's something you have to like keep records on and, and watch the stars and all that fun stuff. Um, but just the the way, and speaking more generally, not just about the flat Earth thing, the way most people think is so weird, and it's it's a direct result of of how the indoctrination camps work, which interrupt people's trains of thought. And, you know, John Taylor got, has written a billion books about it and they're all awesome. Um, it's, it's like it's designed. Well, it is designed to interrupt a train of thought so that nobody learns how to actually really get into something and concentrate it on it and really understand it. Like to me, school consisted of most of the time, 30 or 40 minutes thinking about something I didn't want to think about and and mostly like doing something else or thinking about something else that I wasn't supposed to be. Or when I get to something I didn't want to learn about or think about, this very short, watered down, way too brief, not at all in depth, superficial, blah, blah, blah about something and then run on to something else. It's like, oh, I might have actually gotten into that 
if you didn't stop after two seconds. Like, the uh, who the hell does that in their own real life is, wow, I'm really curious about something, but I'm pretty sure that in a half an hour I'm going to suddenly be curious about something completely unrelated, and then I'm going to keep doing that all day. And, uh, of course, I would never spend more than a half an hour reading about something or thinking about something or figuring something out. It just, uh, it just, it really does interrupt the brain process to make people have no attention span and no in-depth understanding of anything because they never focus on one thing long enough um, and they're not allowed to. So, and, and you see, and I think the pattern of the way Americans think, and it's probably people all over the world, um, I think is in large part because of this. And so if you try to actually explain something, even even an explanation that only takes 10 minutes, most people get lost in two seconds and they never, like, like they're, they're, they're the, the students, and I don't even blame the students for this, I usually blame the teachers, the students who go to a class and they're sort of half following it, and I kind of understood some of that, but the teacher keeps going, so most of the class is like, I didn't really fully grasp that, but I got some bits and pieces here and there and I'll sort of fudge it. And Well, I got it 73 on the test, so I guess that counts as passing. Well, that indicates you didn't understand the, the material, which usually indicates that the teacher sucks um, or that the setting and the whole format sucks, and that isn't how people should learn. Um, but... But if you actually totally grasp something, it's it becomes a lot more certain and concrete, and then you're familiar with it. Um, you know, and, and it's one reason I think it's it's really unfortunate that that computer programming um, isn't focused on with more people. And and now a lot of it is sort of like write a little macro on top of somebody else's operating system, and I I sort of belly ache about that because. I like when it was all the way from scratch because you have to think logically. Like the computer will do exactly what you tell it to. Well, unless it's a Windows machine, then it explodes. Otherwise, <laughs> it does just what you tell it to, not what you meant to tell it to. And that's very important. And it forces people to think critically and precisely and like, oh, well, I meant go to that line over there. And yeah, well, you didn't say that. So it went somewhere else and the program went completely berserk because you told it to do the wrong thing. And so it forces your brain to be precise and accurate. Um, and, and I actually think things going wrong is one of the most useful things is like, well, uh, why is the program doing this? Um, but it only, you know, that only does any good if you're sort of programming from the, the very basic level. Because if it's just ran, you know, if it's Windows freaking out and giving the blue screen of death, doesn't teach you anything except Windows is unstable and sucks. Um, but just like logic puzzles and, and learning to program computers and things like that, it forces all the way specific, precise, sort of proof-based thinking. Um, where, you know, in a program you don't say, well, kind of go kind of sort of over there in the program somewhere. That general area, there's no such thing as a general area. And they're like, do this mathematical formula. There's not, multiply y by, I don't know, three or four, somewhere around there. Like, there's no such thing as somewhere around there. Um, you need to be precise. Your thinking needs to be exact. And then logic and stuff applies. <laughs> and if you do it wrong... The outcome is horrible. Um, but most people seem to just think in vague, wandering mush. And the worst part of it is that they seem to think that that's okay. Like, they seem to... Or, or, or maybe it's just that they're assuming everybody else thinks in vague mush because it's all they know. It's all they've ever experienced. And they can't imagine other people actually understanding and knowing stuff. Like, oh, you can't prove what the shape the Earth is. Well, yes, I can because I understand physics and geometry. You can't, maybe. <laughs> Probably not, given your own statements. But to assume nobody else can is so arrogant and stupid at the same time. It's like me saying, oh, nobody can... 
design a program that will figure out the square root of, you know, big numbers, why not? Somebody can. Just because you can't, don't just declare that nobody can. Um, so, but I think this mushy-headed, irrational thinking is essential for having a subject class. Because if people are are logical and, and get that, okay, there is this objective reality. And I think there's a lot of things about it we don't nearly know. I'm not a, I'm not what I would call a materialist. I'm not a determinist. Um, because I see and I experience things that don't neatly fit into that explanation. However, I don't just think everything is gray, mushy, nothing with no real cause and effect and no real proof and no real figuring anything out. Um, it's, there's a bunch of things we can figure out and we can know. And a lot of people don't. And I think those people just go through life thinking that everybody else is as mushy in the head as they are. And it's a good thing they aren't because mushy physics and math wouldn't make very good automobiles and computers. And I don't know, we'll have something kind of shaped like this that might sort of work like that. And yeah, that's going to work really well with your combustion engine. Uh, yeah, flames come flying out all over the place and it may or may not, the gears may or may not fit and the crankshaft may or may not be the right size, uh, whatever. You know, I feel like I'm doing good work, and if I believe in myself, uh, no, it'll be a freaking disaster. So precision and accuracy and logic and proof seem to be foreign to a lot of people to a level that's just creepy to me. Um, and But again, the creepiest thing is they seem to think everybody else is that way too. Like, if they've never experienced clear understanding of something... They just assume nobody's ever experienced. Well, nobody really knows. How do you know? Somehow you know that nobody knows just because you don't. Um, so it's a fascinating but frustrating and sometimes depressing look into the human brain, which is capable of so much, but so freaking wasted. <laughs> so many people are wasted. That's not what I meant. Like, the brain power that human beings have is so freaking wasted on so many people who don't know how to use it and never bother to use it and don't really know critical thinking. And, um, and unfortunately, we have to win them over, too. So you have to make things ridiculously simple. But they'll, they'll follow a crowd eventually, which is sad, but whatever. But it's so frustrating when you... And I bet, you know... Most people in one way or another experience this, like when you actually know a whole bunch about some topic and just some random person starts talking as if they know something and you know that they're getting everything wrong and making false assumptions about everything under the sun and you're like, uh, I don't even have the patience to, to start from scratch and explain this all to you. And I don't want to just tell you I know it and you don't, but right now that's all you get because I'm not going to suddenly become your third grade teacher and start from there and try to explain this whole topic to you that you have no idea about, but I happen to know about because I've thought about it or it's part of my profession or, or whatever else. But most people in one way or another have that experience um, and have the experience of, yeah, here's this field where a lot of other people know nothing about this because they don't need to or they've never been exposed to it or whatever. Um, but it seems like some people <laughs> don't think clearly about much of anything. And it's just sort of creepy and gross. And I think in a free society, there would be a lot less of that. Um, but, you know, I don't know. Maybe people would be spoiled and a lot of people would want to sit around just being ignorant idiots. And that's okay, as long as they're attacking people. Well... Not sure it's okay, but it's tolerable. I wouldn't attack them just for being stupid. But, uh, but yeah, it's frustrating, and, and I'm sure you can think of examples in your own life where you know, you know a fair amount about some topic, and you constantly see other people just demonstrating profound ignorance. It's like, uh, do we, is it even worth the effort to try to start explaining it to these people? Who will then turn around and be arrogant? No, I know. And just like, oh, you don't even know how little you know about this topic. 